G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy as we approach the start of the uh, 2023-2024 slash a Big Bash League, BBL 13. And in the lead up to it, I'm going to be making some preview content and I'm going to go team by team. I'm going to start with a season preview here today for the Melbourne Renegades. I'll work my way through the teams and uh, probably do some you know, tournament predictions as well as we get closer to the start of the tournament, which is on December 7th. Before I get into the video, if you don't mind subscribing to the channel, if you want uh, some place to find BBL content throughout this summer, some cricket content, and of course I do AFL content. Uh, even though it's the off season, I'll find a way to work some in anyway. So for now, we're going to talk about the Renegades, uh, I'll talk about their squad, their changes, potentially their best 11, and then potentially a bit of a prediction as well as to how this tournament's going to go for them. So I've picked the Renegades first because uh, they're one of the more interesting ones uh, in terms of squad depth, in my opinion, particularly uh, the batting strength of this team. I think uh, there's a good chance that they will go deep into this tournament. Last year, they did finish third with seven wins and seven losses and made it to the qualifier before being eliminated by the Brisbane Heat by seven wickets. There's been a few changes to their squad. I think last year, the, the feature was um, probably their batting lineup. Uh, we saw Sean Marsh play six games, averaging 46 which is pretty damn impressive. Uh, Aaron Finch averaged about 39 at the top order. I think Will Sutherland as well is another player who was handy with the bat last year as an all-rounder. He, he averaged 30 and just had a strike rate of 150. Um, but I think the batting depth of this team as well is what really is a feature. So I've done a video talking about every team's squads in general, and uh, I'll just flash up the Renegade squad again for you here as well, because um, they've made some important acquisitions, which we'll go through now. Headlined by Quinton de Kock, the South African wicketkeeper batsman, uh, who I believe is going to be available for the first eight games of this tournament. This is the weird variable here with BBL recruits. You've got to factor in how many games they're actually going to be available for. But de Kock has uh, eight games of availability, which is solid enough. And uh, then I think he's going to go back to South Africa to play in their T20 league. But I'll run through some of the other recruits and changes. In addition to de Kock, uh, another big signing that I made is Adam Zampa, obviously the uh, Australian level leg spinner, who was a big factor in Australia doing so well at the Cricket World Cup. He was uh, their leading wicket taker, I think second overall, and had uh, probably the best tournament of his life, to be honest, uh, in Indian conditions playing well. So he joins from the Melbourne Stars, even though Zampa was a stand-in skipper for them last year at times, I think in the absence of Glenn Maxwell. So Zampa has been traded to the rivals in the Renegades, and he's been traded for Sam Harper, who has now joined the Melbourne Stars. The Renegades also signed Joe Clark as their third overseas player. He's the English wicketkeeper batsman. And prior to these two overseas players joining the Renegades, I believe they had no wicketkeeper listed in their squad, which is going to be an issue as well because I don't think Clark is available for the entire tournament as well. I believe in mid-January, he leaves to the UAE for their T20 competition that's going on. Uh, so they're going to lose De Kock, and then one game later, perhaps, they're going to lose uh, Joe Clark as well. So it's going to get icky for them. And then there's also, uh, they've retained their spinner in Mujib Uraman, who uh, also is going to be playing in the UAE T20 competition. So all three of those players might be leaving by the time finals rolls around. Uh, again, a lot of clubs will be in the same position going into finals. This is kind of a, a like common variable when it comes to the Big Bash League, but uh, they look a little bit vulnerable and they're going to need someone to stick on the gloves. But in terms of other signings, Peter Siddle joins again from the Adelaide Strikers, rejoining uh, the Renegades after a few years away. Obviously, he comes in to bolster that frontline bowling attack. Nathan Lyon also signed a three-year deal with the Renegades, uh, which obviously is going to be subject to availability. Australia played Pakistan in a test series to start, to starting on December 14th. Um, the Renegades already kind of have good bowling options, spin bowling options in Zampa and Mujib. Uh, so Lyon will just kind of be a bit of a bonus. He might get one game in at the start, I'd imagine. They've also signed young prospect Harry Dixon, who seems to have a bit of a bright future at, uh, well, in general, in domestic Australian cricket. They've also signed Ian Bell as an assistant coach. That is a new acquisition for them. In terms of major players that left, as I said, Sam Hyper has joined the Melbourne Stars uh, after a pretty solid season. I think he had one of his strongest seasons last year. He scored 264 runs at an impressive strike rate of 141. Um, so that is a little bit of a blow, good way to bolster Melbourne's uh, batting lineup. And there's also no Martin Guptill this year. He had a pretty average season for the Renegades last year, uh, so he has not been retained. Majib, on the other hand, has been retained, like I said. Uh, he didn't take a whole heap of wickets last year. I think it was eight wickets from nine games, or the other way around. Uh, but his economy rate was 6.6, .6, so they've got a few options there. Spinners that can slow the run rate down and um, potentially give them a, a red-hot chance with their really strong batting lineup. 
So like I said, to, to sort of summarize the strengths of the squad, the, the batting lineup looks really formidable and um, there's some decent bowling options in there as well. So what I might do is just plot what I would probably go with as a best 11. Obviously, this is going to be subject to availability uh, and it's also a little bit subjective as well. But you can probably open the batting with Sean Marsh and Aaron Finch and then Quinton de Kock coming there as a first drop is very, very formidable. That's a tough a top three to get through. Uh, then there's uh, Clark, Wells, and Maddinson. Nick Maddinson, that is, uh, lining up in the sort of mid to late order. And then Will Sutherland, I've got as the all-rounder at batting at seven. In this scenario, I think Quinton de Kock probably takes the gloves. Then there's a couple of spin options in Adam Zamper and Mujib, and then uh, Kane Richardson as well. And then you could probably got the two frontline fast bowlers in Kane Richardson and Peter Siddle. So that's probably the best 11 that I'd run with. But on top of that, one player that I'll shout out that I didn't quite put in the best 11 because it's a strong batting lineup, but I could be wrong on that. This guy could play, and that's Jake Fraser McGurk. He's having a really good domestic season. If I'm not mistaken, he hit a pretty quick, I think it was a run ball 100 in the Sheffield Shield like yesterday or something like that. And then uh, I believe he scored a 29 ball century in the Marsh Cup as well. So this guy scores at a good clip and I wouldn't be surprised if he has a breakout season for him, finds his way into the team. Uh, and then there's also Will Sutherland, who again, I think is a very high potential young prospect um, that uh, hasn't quite clicked yet. But long term, I think there's a lot of potential there. If he's already scoring at 150 at an average of 30 with the bat, and if he can become a good fifth option, uh, probably better than the fifth option. But if he's a genuine wicket taker this year in the tournament, he could go a long way to the Renegades, really closing the gap on from third to first. So an overall prediction on the Renegades, uh, based on all that, I think they have the the quality to go top two. I think it is going to be a team that probably relies a lot on their their team their lineup making a lot of runs, particularly that top order. And uh, it's a little bit of an unknown exactly how the that bowling lineup will go. Richardson obviously has been a good player over the years, and it's obviously playing for Australia in the T20 comp right now against India. Uh, Peter Siddle, again, he won't be called up for Australia. Will Sutherland having a good tournament would be, would be a nice plus, and as I said, Fraser McGurk, but there's a lot of runs to be had in that Renegades lineup, so I, I think a top two finish is quite realistic for them. I think they've recruited really well. Anyway, guys, that is just my take on the Melbourne Renegades this upcoming BBL 13, so let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with, what are your predictions for them, and maybe a potential breakout star. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.